To celebrate half a million subs, I made six new shirts for you guys. Each one is based on a design style from a different decade like this shirt inspired by the art deco style of the 1920s. The whole point of these shirts is that everyone will love them, but only fans will notice the hidden Pokemon in each design. So click the card above or the link in the description to check them out. Hey guys, Ron here, and one of my favorite things about Pokemon is how most of them are inspired by so many different cultures and myths from around the world. And it seems like with every generation that passes, Game Freak does a better job at creating Pokemon that are based on the local legends and everyday life of the locations that the regions are based on. You can find a bunch of Polynesian Pokemon in Alola, Parisian Pokemon in Kalos, and more Western inspired Pokemon in Unova. But sometimes Game Freak releases a Pokemon that would have made way more sense in another region based on their cultural origin. That's kind of what this video is about. We're not talking about Pokemon that were planned to be released in other generations, this is all just speculative. And I'm not including Pokemon that people believe should have been in other generations based on environment, cause that would be like saying all ice types should be in Sinnoh cause it's colder there. And honestly, every region has diverse climates, some just have more than others. The entire video is simply to help you understand the neat origins of these Pokemon in a more engaging way. That's all really, so enjoy this little fun exercise. We're gonna go in generational order with our first candidate, Mr. Mime, who should be indigenous to Kalos and there are a bunch of them in X and Y, but while modern mime stereotypes are French, they actually take huge inspiration from Japanese no theater, so Kanto isn't a bad place for good old Mr. Mime. Lapras is based on the Loch Ness Monster, and I'm sure there's gonna be a good nod to Nessie in Gen 8 Scalar region. Maybe we'll find out in Sword and Shield that Lapras are native to Galar. And for the purpose of this video, we're gonna consider Galar to be based on the entirety of Great Britain, and not just England. Zatu is one of the very few overtly American-based Pokemon from the first few regions. It takes inspiration from Native American totems, kachinas, and Latin American birds like the Quetzal. It's a very Aztec and Mayan-based Pokemon, so like the South and Central American-inspired Sigilyph and Maractus, this Pokemon would aesthetically and spiritually fit in the American-inspired region of Unova. Not to insinuate that Game Freak is somehow wrong, because of course I don't expect them to place a Native American inspired Pokemon in Unova three generations prior to them even creating an American inspired region. So let's make that clear for the future. I'm not saying anybody's wrong. Bellossom caught me off guard, but now that I think about it, Alola would make a good home for this hula dancing grass type. Pretty straightforward. The Johto credit music that features a bop in Bellossom even inspired the Ultra Sun and Moon credits visuals. Granbull is tricky. I'm not gonna put a dog in a specific region just because it was first bred in that location. In this case, Bulldogs are as British as can be, but I'm gonna suggest Gramble move its fairy butt to Galar because both of its supposed origins come from the British Isles. The legends of various fairy dogs from Scottish and Irish folklore do seem to give us a reason as to why Granbull is a fairy. Delibird is a straight up Santa bird. Santa is a concept developed in the West, so it's odd for an extremely Japanese inspired region like Johto to debut what is basically the most Christian of all Pokemon. Of course Santa is pretty much universal, but Unova seems to feature way less Pokemon inspired by Asian culture, apart from the legendaries, than any other region before it. They strove to add more Pokemon based on European, North American, and South American culture, so Delibird is a good fit for Unova. Smeargle is based on French artist stereotypes. I mean, it's not a coincidence that the Colosian artists have Smeargles, so I think Smeargle would fit right at home in Kalos, even though a beagle is Galarian, or Gal Galarish? I don't, I don't know yet. As we head to Hoenn, I would also say that Gardevoir would feel comfortable in Kalos. After all, its line is heavily influenced by ballet, which reached its height in France. The champion of the region even uses one as her signature Pokemon, but I would be fine leaving Gardevoir in Hoenn considering it's also inspired by Ningyo dolls. They're pretty Japanese, so Gardevoir can stay. For now. Nosepass and its evolution Probopass, however, are most appropriate in Alola, considering they're 100% based on the Moai heads of Easter Island, Polynesian islands like Hawaii. It's a little known fact that Volbeat and Elomize have the fashion sense of greasers and flappers, which originated in America, but they don't have to take the long trip to Unova because Japan has its own greaser and flapper inspired subcultures, so these love bugs could just be Japanese Pokemon who wear Unovan fashion. Originally, I would have taken Grumpig out of Hoenn since it's based on a biblical passage, but it's too subtle of an origin, so Grumpig is alright where he is. I was gonna complain about Walrein and Glalie being in Hoenn and just suggest them to move to Sinnoh, but when you think about it, ice types can just make their own snow. And just because I'm made out of flesh doesn't mean that I want to be in a room made out of flesh. That's actually like the last thing I want to be around. The Reggies could be moved to Unova for their Jewish origins, or Sinnoh based on where Regigigas is housed. But it's pretty clear that Regigigas roamed the earth and made the Reggies out of rocks, ice, and magma from all different kinds of locations. They just so happened to settle and be sealed in Hoenn. 
The Weather Trio is also based on Hebrew mythology, but considering the nature theme of Hoenn, it kinda makes sense for them to be here, don't you think? As we make it to Sinnoh, Empoleon will be the only Pokemon in which the climate of its region will save it, and also because it's a starter, but both of its origins are European. Its trident is very Greco-Roman, but its Napoleon aspects, which are a lot of it, would make it the King of Kalos. But it's pretty cold in Sinnoh, and penguins like the cold, so Sinnoh works. The Sinnoh starters are based on legends from around the world anyways, that's kinda their theme but a Colosian Empoleon would be nice. Lucario is uh, it's kind of Anubis looking. This Egyptian god would complement Kafagrigus in Unova, since everything west of Central Asia, which obviously includes Africa, is represented by Unova, considering New York is one of the most culturally diverse cities ever. I want to say Lopani would work in Unova considering its playboy-esque look, but I don't want to, so let's not talk about it. I'd be very happy to talk about Licky Licky though. That, that's probably the first time anybody has said that phrase. Its design is based on the 18th century fashion like the British Macaroni or Dandy, but could be French in its origin. Either way, Kalos would work aesthetically. It would have a nice life there, but this Pokemon would do well in Galar as well. Honchkrow is clearly a mob boss, but not the Japanese Yakuza, but rather the Italian-American mob. It would be able to control most of Unova, so that should be its turf. Galade could be from Kalos though. It's visually close to a Roman soldier, but it's based on knights, just like Gardevoir. It's an embodiment of chivalry, the code of conduct of a knight, very similar to the Bushido code of honor that samurai follow, but chivalry is French in its origins, so it definitely would fit in Kalos more than Sinnoh. Any Pokemon I mentioned that could have been inspired by Roman culture would be good in the Generation 8 region as well. Arceus stays where it is since it's an amalgamation of many creator gods from around the world, but the Sinnoh legends do have parallels with the Shinto creation myth, so the Japanese inspired Sinnoh is fine. It's all good in the Japanese neighborhood. The god Pokemon can be wherever it wants, all at the same time. Anyways, speaking of time, it's time for Unova. Now the whole point of Unova is that differences are united and diverse ideas and cultures are why Unova prospers. So it makes sense for Unova to have Pokemon based on cultures outside of America. But maybe some Unovan Pokemon have their origins from other regions. The starters are examples of this diversity by representing different countries. Superior is based on the French aristocracy. So Kalos is like home to this snack dude. Samurott is a samurai. So maybe the first Oshawas were brought to Unova from a place like Jodo. Embor is Chinese, but there ain't no China region, so let's move on. Sock and Throw are both based on the Japanese martial arts of Judo and Karate. So putting him in a region like Kanto wouldn't be a big deal, but I don't want to strip Unova of all its Japanese inspired Pokemon, especially when things like Karate and Judo have been adopted in America. But Darmanitan's origin hasn't. It's based on the traditionally Japanese Daruma dolls, modeled after a famous Buddhist monk. Johto is the most traditional of the four Japanese Pokemon regions, so Darumaka would be perfect on the teams of one of those monks in Johto, but its enthusiasm may actually reflect the energy of Americans and only resembles its origin in terms of personality when it's in Zen mode, but that's kind of a stretch. Johto it is. Escavalier and Excelgor, who are based on knights and ninjas, get a pass, cause they kinda need to be in the same region to work even though I want to put them in Sinnoh and Kalos. Drudigan could be partially based on the Welsh dragon, but it's such a divergent design that it doesn't have to go to Galar if it doesn't want to. But the Swords of Justice, come on! They're based on the Three Musketeers. They would have been perfect as a legendary trio or group from Kalos. Game Freak must have known that their next generation was going to be based on France, but admittedly, the Swords of Justice go along with the theme of Unova, since they protect Pokemon who are victims of urbanization and deforestation, which challenges the message that Pokemon in Unova live in harmony with humans. It's a very mature duality, so they must stay in Unova. But the Three Musketeers are a famous western tale, so it makes sense for these legendaries to be from Unova. But the forces of nature? The Kami Trio? They're explicitly based on Japanese mythology, so much so that many fans in the west kinda hate them partially because they don't really know their Japanese origins. Putting them in Hoenn would make sense, but we already have a nature related trio there, so Johto it is. Now it's Kalos' turn, with Greninja, it, well it's, it's a ninja. Ninjas are Japanese. We all know that. This shinobi frog would work in Kanto or Jodo. Pangoro makes no sense in France. There's no bamboo there. Let's put Pangoro in Hoenn. And I always question why we have a luchador bird in Kalos when Halucha would fit perfectly in Unova with those other Latin American Pokemon. 
I always thought Hoopa, a very Middle Eastern gin inspired Pokemon, makes more sense in the diverse group of Unova Pokemon, but turns out France has the largest amount of Muslims in any non-Muslim country, so cows make sense even though jinn aren't exclusively Islamic concepts and Hoopa could be based on Majin. But now, most Alolan Pokemon have a reason for existing in the region, and the ones that aren't Hawaiian inspired have no better region to turn to, so that's where we end it. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to click the check mark for notifications. Check the description for the music I used, the link to the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon, or better yet, become a member by pressing the join button to get rewards like seeing my videos days early. Make sure to follow me on Twitter too, and I'll see you guys very soon.